you've come across this with coal suppliers to Eskom. We can't give any details at this point in time because the state then loses its competitive advantage in terms of any negotiations that it might want to enter into with one or other of these SEPs. Uh, there was a transaction advisor that was appointed, as you are aware, uh, last year to process uh, all of these uh, offers that, that we've actually had. We do have a, a short list that they have actually produced. The board will be uh, provided with that short list and uh, we are due to meet in the next 24 or 48 hours to conclude how we process those, those particular issues as, as well. So once we have the final numbers, uh, honorable members, on the cost of the BRPs, we'll certainly make that available. But I'm sure in due course, you would want to call the BRPs yourselves to ask them to account to you uh, for the period they've been in charge of, of SAA. And we'll give you our version at that particular point in time. So the, the, the uh, what else is there? Yeah, I think Honorable Malinga made references to uh, the voluntary severance packages being paid on time. They should have been paid much earlier in our view uh, as, as a department because uh, the, the money was there to begin the payments uh, so that employees weren't left in the kind of uh, position that they eventually found themselves in. And it is definitely not the intent of government to place additional hardships, uh, Honorable Komane, on anybody. But uh, as I've pointed out repeatedly, and the DG has pointed out as well, we only have so much of leverage in this regard. And the, it's, it's very regrettable that when it suits NUMSA, they're quite willing to sit and negotiate. Uh, for example, in the labor forum that was created last year on which you've had reports from us, and when it suits them, they go on these tirades in the public domain. Uh, whilst they know the truth, they uh, don't mind actually twisting that truth uh, in order to suit whatever political intent they actually have. And uh, we will continue to do uh, what we can, both in the best interest uh, of the country and SAA on the one hand, and be as humane as is possible as is demonstrated in the fact that we've put a social plan in place for SAA employees uh, to support the employees th themselves. Finally, on, on the question of Transnet, I think the DG pointed out very well that we have a stable situation as far as Transnet is concerned. Some of the difficulties that they had during the COVID period have, have been overcome. The conge congestion that was experienced at the Durban port has also been uh, overcome as a result of some reorganizing that has actually happened. Uh, what is important now is that we've created good co lines of communication uh, between different stakeholders and ourselves, but also different stakeholders and the Transnet management and the CEO is on record at a webinar yesterday, uh, giving that commitment as, as, as well. And uh, there is a new uh, perspective and strategy being developed, which uh, we'll brief you on as soon as the process has been concluded, which will be very exciting as far as uh, the Durban port is concerned and how it is to be uh, become the hub of ports in, in South Africa, but also how do we expedite both imports and exports uh, in a way in which uh, it is supportive of the economy. It is still the policy uh, of government and Transnet has to do more in this particular regard to take uh, any haulage uh, from the roads and transfer them to, to trains. And the train is definitely cheaper uh, than traveling by road. But once those efficiencies are attained as, as far as Transnet freight is concerned, uh, we, we can certainly begin to move in, in that particular direction. I don't think that there's any crumbling infrastructure, but there are certainly infrastructure issues uh, that need to be resolved, particularly in the Durban-Joburg line, uh, where there were difficulties in respect of one of the lines, but we'll update you once Transnet appears before you in that particular regard. 
The pipeline issues have become a lot more secure than they have been in the, in the past. And I think we are all at one uh, and in agreement, Chairperson, that we need to get as much of the cargo traffic out of the roads uh, and onto rail as is possible. And 2021 uh, should actually become the critical year in which that switch uh, is actually made. Uh, for example, uh, in, in this particular regard, you will be aware that yesterday uh, there was the launch of the 16 billion run investment by Ford uh, Motors uh, in a plant near, uh, just out on the eastern side of, of Pretoria. Now, Transnet is very much part of uh, uh, this uh, project. Uh, I'll be meeting with the senior person from Ford tomorrow uh, to have further discussions with them on how Transnet could be of assistance. But uh, once those logistics are in place, uh, Ford will become a major exporter, manufacturer in South Africa, and exporter of certain types of vehicles uh, to both Africa and other parts of, of the world as well. So there again, I think Transnet has a critical role to play to support the key industries in South Africa, both mining uh, and autom automotive in the first instance, uh, but others as well. So once we have that strategy uh, organized, uh, you will see that uh, Transnet can uh, go from strength to strength. It is also the intent, and this is being looked into at the moment, to enter into partnerships with the private sector uh, of one kind or another, depending on what we're talking about, whether it's rail or port or parts of the terminals. Uh, and, and in the next few months, that will become clearer as well as the kind of direction that, that we want to move in. So all in all, Chair, whilst we have some difficult uh, difficulties with some of the entities concerned, uh, as the Deputy Minister pointed out, I think Danell can be put onto a new road, uh, and he indicated some of the changes that the Danell Board wants to make, and we will certainly support them in that regard. Uh, but those changes are serious. It requires strong leadership to actually lead that particular process. SAFCOL is reasonably stable, and it needs to grow from strength to strength. Alexco is an entity that requires uh, a complete relook in order to see how we can best uh, utilize what it actually has to offer and the kind of mining rights that it actually has at this particular point in time and some private sector partnership might have to be considered uh, in that regard as well. Uh, Eskom is, is uh, uh, on, 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 the, on a new road, uh, both in terms of its restructuring, but also in terms of its operation as well. And Transnet, as I said, has an exciting future, both in relation to bringing in private sector participants in some of the infrastructure projects uh, and in some of the operations as well, uh, but also in terms of the kind of new direction that it wants to go. So thank you very much for all of your questions and interactions, and uh, we'll work with you to go into more detailed presentations as we go into the rest of the year. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you. Uh, DG, the Deputy Minister. Uh, now, honorable members, there is a, a strong uh, hand that is coming from Honorable Shabalala. Though my time is almost over, can I quickly go to Honorable Shabalala? Yes, Chairperson. Thank you so much, and, and thank you to the Minister for your response. Uh, look, uh, Chair, I, I think one has moved a, a motion, uh, if not uh, a matter for consideration by the Portfolio Committee that says that let's write to the Speaker and just seek an advice, uh, legal advice around the issue of tabling of, of, of financial states, uh, of the tabling of the uh, statements. So I, I just feel that we, we need to take a decision around that. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Honorable Shabalala. 
Honourable uh, Kajalia. Thank you, Chair. With regard to the letter to the uh, uh, to, to the speaker, uh, I just need to clarify that uh, this committee and its predecessors have been addressing the issues for a very long time, many years, about the inability of SOEs to produce time yet financial statements. Many requests have been made, many letters have been written, and many years down the line, we are in the same position. That was the motivation for a non-controversial private member's bill to make sure that SOEs produce financial statements timelessly. I would have hoped that this committee would consider that favorably. Thank you. Okay, honorable members, uh, do you have a follow up, honorable Shabala? No, Chair, it's safe to say that we hear what honorable Kachela is saying. We, we, we are not saying that we don't want accountability. Uh, whether historically this portfolio committee has been trying to do that, we're in the sixth administration. And I think it's only fair that we exhaust uh, avenue and we have not uh, really tested. So it's only fair that we write to the speaker and we allow ourselves uh, uh, to engage in a process beside us just immediately going to the private, like we said, private members feel it's upon a member to do so. So it's not something necessarily that needs our okay or not. Uh, what we are tabling right now is that can we consider that and take a decision? Perhaps we must just call for other members to hear what their views are, whether they support or they don't. Thank you, Chair. Okay, honorable members, what is uh, your views? Can any other member speak? But uh, I just want to indicate that since we came in this sixth parliament, uh, we didn't have a situation where there was uh, a resistance of presenting financial report without any reasons. There were reasons that you all are aware of in so far as these entities that have been unable to. For example, SAA is undergoing the process that is in now. Now, I, I just want, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what informs the, 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 the suggestion that is taking this particular route. But uh, I'm open for members to come and engage here. Chair, my hand is yeah, up. Yes, uh, uh, let's start with you, Komani. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, uh, one would just uh, maybe want to note that uh, we should not be a committee that is just rubber stamping or just looking at things. So my, my view on this matter would then be we, yes, we need a legal opinion on to how the committee should go about in the in, in the in the instances when the the, the departments or, or state owned ent ent entities does not submit the the required information within the stipulated time. So if us writing to the speaker for a legal opinion is is is, is the way that would enhance this committee uh, the committee to hold the SOEs and the departments accountable. So be it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Komani. I saw Honorable Mkwanase's hand. It's not, if you will draw the hand. Honorable Mkwanase. Chairperson, um, if I may come in, uh, this is okay. a matter for the committee to determine. So can you excuse us, please? And thank you very much for that. OK. Um, all other members, I mean, uh, invited guests, we can release them, Honorable Minister. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much for your comprehensive uh, presentation with the department. Uh, on behalf of the committee, we thank you. We thank can you. release you. Thank you. Um, Kwanazi. Uh, thanks, Chair. 
I don't know what is happening with my gadget when I want to speak. I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, my view uh, on this matter is that can I can I persuade uh, the members? I I mean I mean I I understand uh, what Honourable Shabalala is saying and I I, I fully support uh, the motion, but. Before that, can I pursue uh, uh, honorable members? Maybe um, I need to be advised uh, before a support or, um, or, 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 or deal with it to say, uh, can we uh, explore um, a PMF a, uh, 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 um, uh, act processes because uh, they, I think it is uh, specified on how to table that report and 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 going forward. Uh, can I maybe get a space uh, to be advised on that, or maybe and uh, 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 before um, pursuing uh, other routes? Uh, of course, uh, what is tabled by the motion tabled by Honorable Shabalala, I think it really needs to be considered. But uh, Chairperson, can I also be assisted uh, before 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 that with the PMF um, uh, processes uh, there? Uh, thanks, Chair. Okay. Who else want to speak? Uh, Chairperson, Committee Secretary. Yes. Yes. Uh, come in. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I thought maybe it's it's important for me to just uh, bring to the attention of the committee the sections within the PFMA that uh, um, provides for uh, uh, all entities and departments of the state to table their annual report. Section 65 2A of the PFMA requires that a minister who fails to table an annual report for an entity within six months, which is by the 30th of September, of the financial year must write, must table a written explanation to the, to the speaker and the reasons why the report was not tabled. And that is, that is what has informed why the minister and the Department of Public Enterprise and its entities have not. Those, those, those uh, uh, reports, they get, those letters get tabled in the ATC and published for all portfolio committees which are affected and then there's also the national treasury regulations uh, uh, that uh, 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 there's actually a, a, that that deals with the guidelines for legislative oversight through annual reports. Uh, I will try and send them to members of the committee to see in terms of where the national treasury actually guides, give us a guideline in terms of how do we use table, uh, what happens when a department or an entity does not table its annual reports within the time frame, and what is that the portfolio committees need to do in that particular regard. Uh, um, however, it is still within the committee's uh, um, right to take a decision in terms of the legal opinion. Okay. Okay, that, that, that's the, the, the advice from the secretary, honorable members. Um, I think the suggestion by Chabalala that we seek legal advice from the speaker so that we, we move on this with a clear understanding as what is expected from us. Um, Honorable Kashalia, your hand seem to be up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to, for, for clarity, following on what the Secretary has, has, has read out, I want to just read what the amendment proposed says. It says that the amendment of the Act be as amended, uh, uh, is hereby amended by the substitution of the following paragraph, that the executive authority must table a written explanation in the legislature, setting out the reasons why they were not tabled, and must table such annual reports, financial statements, and an audit report on those statements within 60 days after the tabling of a written explanation. So all that says is that 
the written explanation, after the written explanation, they must table it within 60 days. Now that is the crux of the matter and will go a long way to achieving what we want to see in terms of information so that we can discuss, debate, and assist. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I hope we, we, that doesn't uh, conflict. It's not in conflict with the proposal to write to the uh, speaker so that we are provided with that particular legal advice. And the seemingly majority of the members that have spoken seem to be agreeing that let's seek that legal advice. Am I concluding this discussion properly, honorable members? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Secretary, that is the, 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 the way forward. The way forward is that we will be writing a letter to the speaker seeking a legal advice based on this non-compliance by these entities. Uh, you, you, you got us. Thank you. Uh, Honorable members. Okay. Honorable members, uh, let's quickly go to the minutes of the previous meeting. I know we are already on injury time. Can we quickly go to the minutes of the previous meeting? Secretary? Secretary? Oh, Chairperson, I'm here. Yeah, we are on uh, the minutes now. Ne? I'm on the minutes of the 26th of uh, January 2021. 20, I'm not, I, I'm not going to fly them because they only speak of adoption of minutes. Yeah. Yes, uh, basically this is the meeting where uh, the members were adopting minutes in the draft program for 2020, uh, 2021 first term. Uh, the minutes that were adopted was basically the minutes of the 8th of July, 11th of November, 2020, 20, May, 2020. 17 June 2020, 6 May 2020, 27 May 2020, 25 November 2020, 2 June 2020, 4 November 2020, 24 June 2020, 10 June 2020, 15 July 2020, 3 June 2020, 19 August 2020, 2nd of September 2020, 18th of November 2020, 25 August 2020. Uh, and we also considered the first term program and some of the issues that were added by the committee was basically to amend uh, the presentation that we received today regarding the issue of the work of the business rescue practitioners for SAA and Express Airways. And that on the meeting of ESCOM that we are going to get next week that they also include the issue of load sharing and also that we, the committee must also ensure that they applies for its oversight visit to Alexco as a grade. That was in the main, uh, the minutes for 26, 26 January, 2021. Uh, are you done? I'm done, Chair. Okay. Honorable members, those are the minutes of the previous meeting. Can we adopt the minutes? Chairperson. Honorable Chabalala. Thank you. It's Honorable uh, Jay Chabalala. I move uh, for the adoption of the minutes as raised and read by the Secretary of the Committee. Thank you. Yes, uh, Honorable Julius Chavarala has adopted the proposed adoption of the minutes. Is there any second? Uh? I second, Chair. Honorable Mkwanazi. Thank you. Honorable Mkwanazi. Honorable Jabu Mkwanazi accepted the I mean, uh, seconded the minutes. That's uh, the end of our meeting, Honorable Members. Thank you very much.
uh, for this uh, long but uh, a good meeting. The meeting is adjourned. Long live the chairperson. Chairperson, pick up yeah, your phone. Thank you, Chair.